It's a crisis on the Colorado. Which provides water to nearly 40 million people. It's leading to historic water cuts. The worst of these cuts are going to hit in Arizona. Guess how much California had to cut? Zero. California and Arizona are fighting each other right now over the Colorado River. But this is not new. It's actually been going on for more than 100 years. And at one point, two states literally went to war over it. To some extent, this crisis can be blamed on climate change, but that's only part of the story. The U.S. has also been overusing the Colorado River for more than a century, thanks to a Byzantine set of laws and court decisions known as the Law of the River. This legal mess gives out more water than there actually is on the river, and it's driven conflict in the region, especially between the two biggest water users, Arizona and California. And now, as a massive drought grips the region, the law of the river is reaching a breaking point. So we might have a reckoning in this country about how much farming can be done in these deserts out here in the West. The river water sustains some of the largest cities in the country. We need to think about how we grow and if we grow. The Colorado River begins in the Rocky Mountains and winds its way southwest through the United States twisting through the Grand Canyon and entering the Pacific at Baja, California. In the late 19th century, as white settlers arrived in the West, they started diverting the river to irrigate crops, funneling its water through these primitive dirt canals. For a little while, this worked pretty well. They were able to create an industrial farming mecca out of land that the earliest explorers had condemned as quote unquote worthless. Even back then, at the turn of the 20th century, the two biggest users were Arizona and California who used so much of the river for irrigation that they literally started to dry it out further upstream. Now, according to American legal precedent, whoever uses a body of water first generally has the strongest rights to it. But other states started to get pretty upset over this. California was growing much faster than the other states, and the other states basically said it's not fair that they get to take all the water before we get a chance to develop our own cities. In 1922, the states came to a solution, kind of. At the suggestion of a newly appointed cabinet secretary named Herbert Hoover, they agreed to split the river into two equal sections. They drew a line arbitrarily right down the middle of the river at a spot called Lee Ferry. The states on the upper part of the river, which is Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, and New Mexico, agreed to send the states on the lower part of the river, Arizona, Nevada, and California, 7.5 million acre feet of water. Quick aside, here's what an acre foot is. It's enough water to cover an acre of land in a foot of water. That's enough to supply two average size homes for about a year. This agreement between the seven states was basically supposed to stop any one state from drying up the river before the other states got a chance to use it. The upper basin got half of the river and the lower basin got half of the river. Along with this agreement, the government built two massive reservoirs called Lake Powell and Lake Mead to control the way the water flowed down the river, clearing the way for farms and cities to flourish across the U.S. Southwest. There were some serious flaws to this plan. First, the indigenous tribes that had depended on the river for generations were now forced to compete with states to get their share of the water. They had to file these drawn out lawsuits that often took decades to resolve. Many of those tribes still don't have their water. Also, the law of the river overestimated how much water there was in the river in the first place. The state's numbers were based on data from these primitive stream gauges that they'd placed at arbitrary points on the river. They also took samples during an unusually wet decade, which led to a very optimistic estimate of the river's flow. The river only actually averaged about 14 million acre feet per year, but the agreement handed out 15 million acre feet to the seven states. You'll also notice that the Colorado River doesn't end in the United States, it ends in Mexico. And initially, the law of the river just straight up ignored that fact. Decades later, Mexico got squeezed into that initial agreement. They were given another 1.5 million acre feet, which further strained the already overallocated river. This wasn't a problem to begin with because the states didn't actually have the infrastructure they needed to use all that water, but it set in motion the problem that has emerged today. That the states have the legal right to use more water than there actually is in the river. Arizona and California, though, they struck it rich. Together, they had by far the largest share of the Colorado River, and they should have been primed for growth. For Arizona, though, there was a catch. They couldn't actually put their water to use. The state's biggest population centers in Phoenix and Tucson were hundreds of miles away from the Colorado River itself, and getting the water from the river to the cities would require a canal of more than 300 miles. 
That's something the state could not afford to build. California was large enough and wealthy enough that it could build all the pumps and canals and dams it needed to get the water to its farms and cities. Meanwhile, California's very powerful congressional delegation basically lobbied Congress to block Arizona's attempts to build that 300-mile canal. The state wanted to keep the largest share of the Colorado River for itself. So in 1934, Arizona and California went to war. They literally went to war over this. When California tried to build this structure called the Parker Dam to save more water for its own use in farmland, and Arizona said, we're going to stop you using military force if necessary. It ended up being pretty ragtag, but this is the boat that Arizona's Navy sent to stop the construction of the Parker Dam. It did delay construction, but not for very long because the boat got stuck in some cables and another boat had to come rescue it. For the next 30 years, Arizona and California just kept fighting about whether Arizona should be able to build the 300 mile canal and take its share of the water. They also ended up suing each other before the Supreme Court no fewer than 10 separate times including in one case that set the record for the longest oral arguments in the history of the modern Supreme Court. The arguments took 16 hours over four days and required more than 106 witnesses. Sounds really boring. That 1963 case also contains some pretty optimistic assumptions. Even though the states now knew that their initial estimates of the river's flow had been too high, the court appointed special master who was overseeing the case said that I am morally certain that neither in my lifetime, nor in your lifetime, nor the lifetime of your children and great-grandchildren will there ever be an inadequate supply of water on the river. He said he was as certain of this as he was of the multiplication table. That's really unfortunate. A few years after that court case, in 1968, Arizona finally struck a bargain to get its canal. California dropped its opposition in Congress, and the federal government paid to build the so-called Central Arizona Project which brought water all the way across the desert to Phoenix. This move not only helped save Arizona's cotton farming industry, which had been running out of water, it also cleared the way for Phoenix to grow into the fifth largest city in the United States. It seemed like a success. Arizona was flourishing. They were doing great. But in exchange for the money to build the canal, the state made a very, very fateful concession. Arizona agreed that if the water levels at Lake Mead and Lake Powell were ever to run low, it would be them and not California that would take the first cuts. A quote, mega drought in the southwestern part of the country is putting that region's water supply at severe risk. Historic water cuts to multiple states are now possible. And California, which uses the most, has the right to take its cuts last. Today, more than 20 years into the drought, Arizona has had to bear the largest share of the burden. Thanks to its earlier compromise decades ago, it took the first cuts as part of a nationwide drought plan. This is where we stand now. The Colorado River is averaging about 12 million acre feet per year. That's compared to the 16.5 million that the agreement between the states has doled out. The upper basin has the rights to 7.5 million of those acre feet, or about half, but they don't actually use all that water. They've never used it all. The lower basin, though, they use all their share. California and Arizona take four and three million acre feet respectively per year. And this overdraft has caused reservoir levels to plummet. If Lake Powell and Lake Mead ever fall below a certain threshold, the hydroelectric dams at both reservoirs would stop generating electricity, which would take power away from a lot of people throughout the West. If the levels fall further to a threshold known as Deadpool, water just wouldn't be able to move through the river system at all, which would be catastrophic. The government ordered the states last year to reduce their total water usage by more than a third, which is a jaw-dropping demand. As you might expect, the state's jaws dropped. They were not happy about this. And Arizona and California are still fighting over who should take the biggest share of cuts. California has basically insisted that the law of the river requires Arizona to take the pain here. And from a strictly legal perspective, they're probably more or less right. But Arizona has said that further cuts would just be disastrous for its economy. It would just destroy the agriculture industry, destroy the real estate industry, leave a lot of people paying a lot more money for water. And the other five states on the river have basically taken Arizona's side on this. Either way, the cuts have to come from somewhere because the law of the river is based on math that just doesn't add up.